start start with this one. So, so okay. So um, I will say before you jump into the details, uh-huh. what's the what headline? was the pit? Do, do we know the penalty that this person got? Thirty years. They're gonna be getting thirty, 30 years. Ye- they mean 30, 30 years, years in prison for their years. shenanigans, their, ta- 30, their financial 30 shenanigans. Years, 30 years in prison for their shenanigans. And I'm going to tell you, we've done quite a few tax teas so far. Okay, maybe like four. And I'm not going to lie. I don't feel bad for this one. other ones that we did I was like you know maybe they would have made mistakes and you know maybe they I can understand how they would have omitted and missed the stuff but this one I have no sympathy for this person and <laughs> the reason why is basically the this uh, daycare CEO owner um, based in Georgia she was collecting um, taxes from the employees so like basically you know their Medicare Social Security or S- Social Security withdrawals she was taking all that and reserving it and collecting it from the employees that she had in her business, but then she wasn't actually paying this to the IRS. So that's one so, what that's one issue. So so you're saying so she was so when the Withholding. employees got their paycheck, the yep. taxes were taken out. Yep. And she just wasn't handing that over to the IRS. That is correct. She wow. was not paying okay. the IRS. <laughs> I think she did this over a period. I think it was two or three years. I don't remember the exact number of years, but she was not. She was pocketing that money in her pockets and she was not paying the IRS. That was offense number one. Offense number two. This is the one where I'm like, all right, I feel no remorse for you. She was tax. Is it kiting or basically check kiting yeah, kiting. kiting the right one yeah so she was she was check kiting and for those that don't know what check kiting is basically what she was doing is she was she would take a check and I'll just give an example let's say her name is Deborah okay I hope her name's not really Deborah but <laughs> let's say her name is Deborah I mean at this point it's on the news so Deborah was taking she would take a let's say a thousand dollar check and she would deposit a thousand dollar check into bank account A then she would take another check and write it and deposit another thousand dollar check basically pulling money from the account that she just deposited into. And basically what she was doing is think about it like musical chairs. So you put money in here, you write a check in here. And when you write a check, usually what happens, like most people know, you have what you call a floating period. So from the moment you deposit the check to when it actually becomes available in your account, there's that period where the money is still what they call floating. And so what she was doing is she was writing a check, depositing a check that basically what didn't have money in that in an account she was using. She was depositing it, let's say bank account A, and then she was turning around and writing another check out of that same bank account to another bank account. And then what she would do is she would then go during that floating period and would draw cash. And so now what happens is you're writing one check to pull money from an account where there's no money. And then you're basically doing the same thing for the other account. Everything is pending. So you can still go to your ATM and pull money out. But in reality, by the time the other banks catch it, there's no money in the account. So none of those transactions are actually real. Does that make sense? Wow. Make sure I'm, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, go ahead. So I was going to say is, I mean, this is a, a this sounds like a very intentional thing. It is. That's sound like, like <laughs> a accidental situation. Like, oh, I Let accidentally wrote a fraudulent check, deposited in this one, you. then moved the money to this one, then moved the money here. Like, this looks like a well thought out scheme. That it is. Doing. It is. And let me tell you why I don't feel bad for this person at all. In the process of doing these checks and also transfers of fake money and all that stuff she was doing. She attempted to transfer over $75 million between, she had like, I think 12 or 13 bank accounts. And again, keep in mind, this is a person that runs a daycare, okay? There's a daycare CEO. I don't know if she had any other businesses or whatever, but she attempted to transfer, which I'm like, this is probably where you were not smart because that's a lot of money and that's definitely going to cause a red flag. So I don't know if she did it over a series of multiple years, but in total, $75 million in false transfers between accounts. And then she would go try to withdraw the money. So that's one piece. The other piece is, so she successfully withdrew like the the check uh, kiting that I talked about, $2 million in check kiting transactions. And All of those transactions, I think they said lost Bank of America, which was one of the banks that she was using to do this little fraud scheme, lost them $500,000. 
So basically oh, there wow. were transactions that where she deposited checks where the money wasn't existing. And by the time like she did it with Bank of America and they stopped the transaction, at that point, she's already withdrew, withdrawn the money. And so in total, <laughs> in total, she lost Bank of America. It says $500,000 in, in money, in cash. So she either withdrew wow. it um, or she deposited, you know, cash to check that didn't exist for money. So it was just a hot mess. So this is exactly why I say I don't feel sorry for her. So she did plead guilty. This case happened in November. She did plead guilty. And so she's facing up to, at this point, she's probably been convicted because we're in January, going into January. But I mean, honestly, like she did plead, plead guilty and she's facing up to 30 years in prison. And catch this. This is the caveat for me. Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> she, did, she did her own bookkeeping. Oh. She managed all of the financials for herself wow <laughs> yeah yeah she was her own bookkeeper so she didn't have an accountant checking her stuff because i can already tell you an accountant wow. would be like this is super shady super illegal she may have even she probably i wouldn't be surprised if she tried to go to people and they were like mm, i don't want anything to do with this Zero. wow that is that is pretty bad i mean because you know one of the things that i would say when i hear this and i think about this for business owners or why i think this matters is there are a lot of business owners that i know that are that have employees and they're using some type of payroll service and they think that all everything's being handled well like the money mm -hmm. that's being withheld from people's check is being processed well but it's not. Now, this lady was intentionally doing something, but oh, yeah. there have been several businesses that I've seen where the, the payroll service, and I'm not going to say the name of the company, um, but there was one of our clients, before they started working with us, they were using a payroll service provider. And that payroll service provider had some serious errors where they were withholding money from the employee's check but that company wasn't handing the money over to the IRS. So mm. our client, by the time they became a client of ours, they got this letter from the IRS saying, hey, you owe X amount of dollars. He was like, well, what do I owe this for? Like, you know, they were, and then when we dug into it, we realized like the payroll company that they were using was Shady. not actually handing the money over to the IRS. So it was just, it, it was a mess. And so Shady. this is this is one of those areas that I think that, you know, maybe not to the same magnitude of this lady, but this is why I think if you have employees and you're running payroll as a business, I think you need to talk with some, have a conversation with someone who actually understands this, that mm -hmm. knows how to look at your form 940s, 941s and the W-4s and the tax rate, just to make sure that stuff is happening correctly. Because I, I remember there it was another friend of mine in New York, like there was a, a business that called him because they got a letter from the IRS that said they owed $90,000. And Oof. it was because that someone was doing the payroll, like they had somebody in their office, like an office administrator that was running the payroll. That person didn't know what they were doing. They weren't paying the payroll taxes and mm. the owner thought it was being done. So the owner was just, you know, spending the money, running the business, but they didn't realize, hey, by the time they got to the end of the year, $90,000 needed to go to the IRS. And I'm just like, mm. yeah, you could have avoided that had you had a person who knew what they were doing just to take a look at it, just to make sure you guys were on the right path. This situation also impl impacts the employees. Because That's I mean, true. if you think about it from one perspective, the money's being withheld from their check. As the employee, you believe that your employer is doing the right thing, handing the money over to the IRS. Mm -hmm. So when it was time for those employees to file their tax return and those employees put on their paperwork, I paid X amount of dollars in taxes. The IRS is going to look at that and say, we don't have that money from you. You haven't That's paid. A good point. That's so a good point. not only yeah. did this, you know, jack her situation up, the employees mm -hmm. were also jacked up to where the employees are now going to get a surprise bill because their money wasn't being sent to the IRS and it wasn't being properly handled to where I'm just like, yeah, if you're running a business, 
and you have employees or you hire contractors, just have a conversation with an accountant who understands it to make sure you are not creating a problem for you and the people that you employ. That's a really, actually, that is a fantastic point because I don't think anybody should have to pay for anybody else's in, you know, in discussion. But the reality is in that situation, maybe what sparked it was people were getting, you know, her employees were getting bills like, nope, we did not get your tax payment or she was, they were audited and they were like, yeah, this does not look right. But either way, I'm so glad she got what was coming. I feel really bad for the employees who have to kind of go through that. And um, I think it's just at the end of the day, like you said, that that was a really, really good point is making sure that you do what's right. Because at the end of the day, you're playing with people's lives. These are employees that, you know, had trusted and entrusted that she was doing the right thing. And now, you know, they were put in very compromising positions. So very good point there. Mm -hmm.